Counter-Strike 2 just got a new update and this one actually matters. I'm testing what really counts, performance and latency, specifically full screen, full screen windowed and windowed. Because if you're chasing milliseconds, your display mode can make a difference. Or does it? Valve says performance is better across most maps with the new shaders. Smoother frames, fewer stutters, maybe ancient won't melt GPUs anymore? These are the changes that affect how the game feels, not just how it looks. Full screen window also got a big fix. It now stretches properly, supporting extreme aspect ratios. So hopefully your alt tabbing shouldn't crash your PC anymore. Hopefully. But here's the real question. Does this performance translate over to all of these modes? I've been running some tests across all modes to find out. And the results might surprise you. I'll show the numbers in a moment. But first, today's video is sponsored by Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is an automated trading site. Simply trade an old skin that you don't want for a new skin that you do want. The advanced filters make it super easy to find anything. Use my code COOK to get $5 on your first trade and a 35% deposit bonus. They've got 24-7 live support. And don't forget to take part in the free giveaways. They've got free daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways. Link is in the description. Let's start with the easy part, performance. Has performance actually improved in the last two updates? Let's have a look. These are my video settings. Here are my PC details and my monitor details. For average FPS, there's a clear jump between the old version and update 1. The difference between update 1 and update 2 is tiny. You may still notice a small uptick in both of your performance. So yes, FPS has definitely improved. Now, smoothness. This can be measured in a bunch of ways. Simulation error or the good old fashioned frame pacing approach. For today, we'll stick with the frame pacing since it's what most people recognize. Frame pacing smoothness can be checked two ways. Standard deviation, which is how much frame times deviate from the average. RMSST, how much consecutive frames deviate from each other. Here are the numbers. As you can see, there is a slight improvement in the standard deviation and a very slight improvement in RMSSD. Smoothness is up, but by very little. So, is there a difference in performance when you run your game in windowed, full screen windowed, and full screen? Well, definitely no. At least, not for me. A reminder here is that I use Windows 11 24S2, latest Nvidia drivers, hacks enabled, and game mode are on, even for low latency modes. Coming to the juiciest part of this testing, that is latency testing, let's compare my testing method to an LDAT. In the intro, you might have seen this footage, but this is not what I'm using. As you can see, the noise to signal ratio is pretty high here, but it does look good on video. What I'm using is this, with a baseline of just 33 luminance values and muzzle flashes spiking past 950, it makes the signal to noise ratio stable and reliable. In simple words, the LDAT measures at around 8800 FPS of sensitivity, whereas my hardware measures around 10,000 FPS of sensitivity. Here are three tests that I did to see if my device is working properly. I used the black and white transition software by Aperture Grill for this. I tested them at 60 FPS, 144 FPS, and 240 FPS. Well, you may be asking why not just drop my monitor refresh rate directly? Well, that's because it changes how the monitor scans out and performs as CAD results shift when monitor is not running at its fastest refresh rates. Using CAD transitions externally ensures the monitor behaves normally and the results exactly what you'd expect. Values that reflect game render time plus refresh time plus scanout time and the input timing RNG. In some phrase, the input lined up perfectly with simulation, in others, it just missed it. Long story cut short, the device is extremely reliable for measuring end to photon latency. So with that out of the way, here are the results of the test. I took 200 samples and all of them ended up around the same values, meaning there was no difference in input lag on my system in all of these three settings. 
If you're having issues with windowed mode, I would highly suggest creating a restore point and trying default settings on your system with the latest drivers and getting rid of any tweaks you have done to see if it changes anything. A word to fellow benchmarkers, latency testing is fragile. Even a small nudge to the photodiode or a stray ambient light photon can give misleading results. If you are getting an end-to-end -end average input latency of 5 milliseconds on 1440p resolution at 500 fps, perhaps it is time to revisit your test. This is why I always show the method, not just the numbers. The most weird thing to me was that even windowed mode had no added latency. So I ran the test twice and it was around the same values. Flip presentation model works well with DirectX 11 games. Perhaps that is the reason. Perhaps Valve changed something. So for me, there was no added input latency in all these modes and neither any performance differences. But yes, non-native stressed is definitely very very blurry. If you like this video, maybe subscribe. Drop a comment with what you want tested next. And thanks to my channel members for making these deep dives possible.